So maybe you saw the 2023 eclipse and thought, eh. Let me tell you why this one is a little bit different. There won't be another total solar eclipse in the contiguous United States until 2045. So this is probably your last chance to see one for a very long time. So let's talk about why you should consider packing your bags and bringing your students out to see what might be one of the coolest things they see all year. Hey, real quick, if you just wanna know what to do on Eclipse Day, go ahead and jump to that timestamp right here. I'll cover all of it later, but if you'll give me just a little bit, I wanna walk you through what's so cool about a total solar eclipse and why it's worth you and your students' time. To explain a little more about eclipses, I called my friend Howard Hawkhalter, who is an astronomer. Hey Howard, thanks so much for taking my call. A total solar eclipse is a reverential experience. For just a moment, when the sky goes dark, you'll notice that everything goes quiet. Crickets will begin to sing because it's night. As far as all of creation's aware, for a brief moment, night has occurred and gone away. And so you'll notice changes, whether in temperature or in temperament of the animals around you. There's something awe-inspiring about it. It's not, it's not like you can say, well, it's the first time I was in the dark, but there's something to be said about a natural event like this where even the animals get a little freaked out. Your body knows it's supposed to be daylight and it's not. To, to put some history here, um, they've stopped wars, you know, uh, battles certainly. I think it's called the eclipse battle, which was between the Medes and the Lydians. Uh, there was a solar, solar eclipse that occurred during the battle and both sides immediately stopped fighting and sued for peace. Eclipses are nothing new. Generations of ancient man have viewed them with mystical and spiritual significance. But what changed on May 28th, 585 BC, was that this eclipse, when the shadow crept up over ancient Greece, had been predicted. And not by a seer, not by a prophet, but by an early astronomer, Thales of Miletus. You see, he had studied the seven observable wanderers, as they called them. The Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. And because of that, he was able to predict when and where they would intersect on that day, when the sun was covered by the moon. Let's talk about what's so different about a total versus an annular solar eclipse, like we had in 2023. You see, a total solar eclipse will totally occlude the sun, whereas an annular solar eclipse is what happens when the moon is further out on its elliptical orbit, and so it doesn't totally fill up the dimensions of the sun in the sky. And so even at its darkest, some light will still be getting to the Earth. Uh, so the, the moon varies in distance. It's on average about 240,000 miles away from the Earth, but that's just the average. It can be about as far as 252,000 miles away and as close as 225. Part of the reason I'm so excited about this solar eclipse is because so many people are going to have an awesome chance to see it. If you lived in, say, Indianapolis, the last time that you would have had a full, total solar eclipse would have been in 1205, nearly a thousand years ago. So this time, a lot of people aren't going to have to travel, and if you do, probably not very far. The eclipse is on April 8th of this year, so if you want to see it, and you want to see a total eclipse, you'll need to be in the path of totality, which you can see on this diagram right here. As we approach the day of the eclipse, we'll need to make sure that we're prepared. Remember that even though the sun will be behind the moon, it's still not safe to look at. So make sure that you get proper and appropriate eclipse viewing glasses for the day of the event. Another fun activity for Eclipse Day is to make something like a pinhole projector. You can make one or you could just use something like a colander. What you're looking for is something thin, which has a tiny hole in it that allows the light to pass through. As you do this, you'll notice that the light from one side of the sun passes through and crosses to the other side, and the light from the opposite side crosses back to its opposite side, inverting, mirroring itself. When this happens, you'll see crescent-shaped shadows on the ground which mirror those of the phases of the moon, which you might have learned about in Foundations. The reason for this is because instead of the Earth's shadow cast upon the moon, you're seeing the moon's shadow cast upon the Earth. Finally, just as the moon is blocking the light of the sun, it's also blocking the heat. Within just a little bit of time, you'll begin to notice actual temperature changes, first in the ground, and then in the air, and you can measure these by bringing a small thermometer to place at different areas and record the temperature in, say, a science lab journal. Just an aside, 
Make sure to look out for clouds. Dark, thick clouds are your enemy as they'll prevent you from being able to see the eclipse in its entirety. Being able to explain the wonders of God's world does nothing to diminish his creation. In fact, I would contend it makes us closer to him. Isaac Newton once said that a man who thinks half-heartedly would not believe in God, but a man who really thinks must believe in God. If you want to learn more about the sky and the wonders of creation, check out Exploring the Heavens with Uncle Paul. I'll also list some of my favorite eclipse videos in a playlist down below. And as the psalmist states, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim his handiwork. Remember, this is probably your last opportunity to see an eclipse for at least 20 years. So make the most of it and let us know what you did to enjoy Eclipse Day down in the comments below. Remember, learning is a lifestyle. Be an everyday educator.